less than a handful of Mexican or Mexican-Americans have been allowed to direct a major motion picture studio film. The Latinx community makes up 18% of the U.S. population, the largest minority group. 61% of that group are Mexican-Americans, a population mostly concentrated west of the Rockies. 30%, or the lion's share, of all movie theater tickets purchased in America are in fact by Mexican-Americans. Yet, for some reason, over 120 years, people indigenous to North America with dark skin and native features are all but missing in the history of cinema. When they have been seen, they are portrayed as greasers, hooligans, gang members, and most recently, narcos. Making the astonishing run from 2014 to 2019, five of six Academy Awards for Best Director were all won by Mexican-born men. Alejandro González Inarritu, Alfonso Cuarón, and Guillermo del Toro have earned a combined 61 Academy Award nominations with 22 wins, while two of them have won more than one Oscar for Best Director. All three men, light-skinned, from upper-middle-class families and college-educated, were imported to the United States, having already achieved some level of motion picture success in Mexico. In 2014, Alfonso Cuaron was the first Mexican-born director to win an Academy Award with his adrenaline-induced space nightmare, Gravity. A weightless thrill ride of elaborate long shots and harrowing action sequences, all performed by one female actor, Sandra Bullock, for almost the entire length of the film. The mind-bending geometric engineering required for weightlessness demanded the invention of breakthrough special effects, as well as a clever reinvention of the one take. Co-written with his son, Jonas Cuaron, the multi-talented Alfonso also won the Academy Award for co-editing his film. In 2015, Alejandro González Inarritu won multiple Academy Awards with Birdman, or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance, a stirring response to the spandex comic book epidemic gripping cineplexes across the country. Are you drunk? Just find me an actor, a good actor. Give me, uh, uh Woody Harrelson. He's doing the next Hunger Games. Uh, uh, Michael Fessbender. He's doing the prequel to the X-Men prequel. How about, uh, uh, Jeremy Renner? Who? Jeremy Renner. He was nominated. The, oh, okay. He was the Hurt Locker guy. He's an Avenger. Fuck. They put him in a too. too. I can't believe this. I don't care. Just find me someone. Starring one of the most beloved superhero actors, Michael Keaton, who was once himself Batman. Playing the shell of a man in the twilight of his career, desperate for the fame his ego maniacally craves. A chilling reminder of just how empty, indulgent, and self-centered superhero films have become. You were a movie star, remember? Pretentious, but happy. I wasn't happy. Ignorant, but charming. Now, you're just a tiny, bitter cocksucker. Fucking miserable. I was fucking miserable. Yeah, but fake miserable. Hollywood miserable. What are you trying to prove? That you're an artist? Birdman won four Academy Awards, with Inarritu himself winning three of the four, including Best Director, Best Picture, and Best Original Screenplay. In 2016, Inarritu will be the second man in the history of cinema to win back-to-back -back Oscars for Best Director with The Revenant. The revenge saga of the early 19th century fur trapper, Hugh Glass, played by Leonardo DiCaprio in his first Oscar-winning performance. The savage, primal, and questionable way in which this continent was conquered by Europeans. Inaritu is not immune to Hollywood requirements, such as a sympathetic white savior main character. However, to counterbalance this Hollywood tradition, 
Inaritu unapologetically illustrates the plight of indigenous Americans suffered at the hands of white European invaders. The film also plays as an allegory, as it recounts the beginning of the end for the indigenous people of North America. As does the thawing of winter in the film illustrate the coming climate extinction of our planet today. Production had to travel to the tip of South America to find enough snow to fill shots like these. An alarming sign often met with little to no actionable response. The 2016 American presidential race witnessed the rise of white nationalism and white supremacy, primarily attacking Latinx communities. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. In 2017, Alejandro Gonzalez Inarritu will win his third Oscar, this time for special technical achievement with Carne y Arena, a virtual reality short film response to the corrosive false propaganda at the U.S.-Mexico border. In 2018, the master of monster movies, the macabre and fairy tales, Guillermo del Toro will win Best Director for his controversial fairy tale, The Shape of Water, his most personal, poignant, and award-winning film to date. A timeless love story between a mute woman and a sea monster, requiring a prison break by a team of outsiders, a black woman, a gay man, even a sympathetic Russian spy. They are the only ones with enough compassion to prevail against an institution of fear, corruption, and cruelty. Set in 1962 America, a country that shimmers bright with hope, segregation, and male white supremacy. I wouldn't know, sir. Although he looks like a human, like me. Or even you. Maybe a little more like me, I guess. This is the time referred to by modern white supremacists as when America was great and minorities knew their place. I like it. A lot. Gets me going. I bet I can make you squawk a little. Strickland, played masterfully by Michael Shannon, enjoys and relishes a world that caters to his supremacy. Mexican-born Guillermo del Toro will win an Academy Award for Best Director and Best Picture for his daring, outspoken film. Alfonso Cuaron will win his second Oscar for Best Director with Roma 2018, a personal autobiographical film recounting Cuaron's parents' divorce, as well as the deep racial, classist, and gender inequalities of 1960s Mexico City. The film is loaded with symbolic imagery relevant to American society today such as the indigenous housemaid Cleo's tender relationship with the children, grandmother, and employer that is the most timeless. A relationship far beyond that of servant or even employee, in many ways a crucial part of the family, reminiscent of the millions of Americans raised by Latinx servants, nannies, or babysitters. Roma exposed the radioactive nerve endings light-skinned Mexicans of European descent feel toward indigenous people. Decades of conquest, slavery, and an accepted social caste system predicated on skin tone is the cornerstone for rampant racism in Mexico. 
Yelitsa Aparicio was a Oaxacan school teacher before her first motion picture role as housemaid Cleo. She became only the second Mexican performer and first indigenous actor to earn a nomination for Best Actress, eliciting responses such as these. A faithful servant who just says yes, thank you, and please is not a full person like a real actress. Yalitza was also mocked by light-skinned Mexican TV personalities in brown face parodies, precisely the attitude many light-skinned Mexicans have toward indigenous women. No importa lo que te digan, siempre estamos solas. <laughs> Roma's last shot is of the two women from astronomically different worlds, an indigenous servant and a light-skinned Mexican. They're actually not much better off than the other. To the children, the women are all the family they know. Together is all they have. Roma made Oscar history by being the first Netflix movie to earn a nomination for Best Picture, becoming Mexico's first Best Foreign Language Film winner. A special mention must be made to the extraordinary work of the first cinematographer in the history of American cinema to be a three-time Academy Award winner. Emmanuel Lubezki has been nominated for eight Academy Awards as a cinematographer and became the first person to win consecutive Oscars for Gravity 2015, Birdman 2016, and The Revenant 2017. His groundbreaking work in natural lighting, steadicam, and use of CGI to create astonishing seamless one-takes has left an everlasting mark on cinema. In an industry that has for the last 120 years portrayed Mexicans in a negative and racist light, this fraternity of Mexican filmmakers' contribution to cinema is inspiring and long overdue. And yet, this is how Hollywood honors their amazing accomplishments. Who gave this son of a bitch's green card? Birdman! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>